Hello and welcome to our program today. I'm your host, Nai Tabuto. With me in studio is Dr. Alex Ambuchi, the chaplain at Adventist University of Africa. He's going to discuss with us um, the spiritual nurture and training in Adventist schools. Welcome, Dr. Ambuchi. Thank you very much. To start us off, what is spiritual nurture? Thank you. Uh, it's a good question. When we uh, look at uh, the question you are asking about what is spiritual nature. Mm -hmm. I would like to to break it into two mm -hmm. for the purposes for us to understand it easily. Yes. Now, I just want to look at the word nurture mm -hmm. first of all before I move to the next word training and all that. Now, when we look at the word nurture, yes. when I consult Webster dictionary, mm -hmm. talks about it is to help grow or help develop. Yes. Now, when I again go to, to free dictionary, mm -hmm. on that word nurture, mm -hmm. it is action of raising or caring. Mm -hmm. Now, when I move to the third one, uh, which is uh, Collins Dictionary, it is the word care given to someone while growing or developing. So you can now see the nurture, how it is key in this process, okay? Yes. Now when you entwine it with the word uh, spiritual nurture, mm. then now we can come up with this phrase that is important for us to understand. Mm. It is the process of educating force to strengthen every spiritual interest. Mm -hmm. Or we can say to bring unto home or school life a wholesome atmosphere which will help to grow up in nurture and admonition of the Lord. So when you put that in that perspective, we begin to understand what this is all about. And then when you bring the other aspect of uh, training so that you can basically handle it all together. Yes. Um, there's one book I love to read, and this is uh, Christian Education, mm -hmm. and page 47, and paragraph 2. It highlights the following. The Word of God is respected in the home, and teaching made the law of the home, brought up in nature and admonition of the gospel. When they come to school, when these children come to school, so the process of education continues. Yes. Where the parents left and the teachers are picking from there. So you can now see the connectivity, mm -hmm. home environment and school, school. environment. Yes. So these uh, complement each other. Mm -hmm. So a child grows and acquires knowledge that will, will assist the church to develop and grow connected with God. So that's the environment you're talking about. Um, you're talking about spiritual, spiritual nurture. Yes. It's a process. Now, for our case in Adventist University of Africa, mm -hmm. whereby uh, we, it's this, a postgraduate institution, yes. we have um, adults, mm -hmm. And we have people in the society who are respected. Yes. So what we do when they come, we still continue with what they have acquired in their past experience when they were growing as children and when they grow as teenagers and when they grow as young people who made decision of their calling. Mm -hmm. And now as they progress in their career, we still need to create an environment whereby spiritual nature will, will continue to bring meaning to their lives. In the event they missed it, it will remind them by taking them back where, uh, where they missed a link. And that will still continue to give them an atmosphere that they can appreciate on that aspect. 
Kindly tell our viewers, why is spiritual nurture necessary? Um, spiritual nurture is necessary. Today, we have people who have been given education across the globe. Yes. And one aspect in their, in, in their development is missing. Mm -hmm. And this is spiritual nurture. Yes. And in the absence of spiritual nurture, what basically comes out, you find like ladies who you are familiar with the kitchen, you find food that is half baked. Someone is baked in all aspects, mm -hmm. but on the spiritual aspect, mm -hmm. one is missing something. Yes. And that will create a problem because this person has no connectivity with the wholeness of what education provides. Yes. yes. So what is the role of spiritual nurture and training in Adventist education? Okay, number one, that what it does is it allows them to experience the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. Yes. And number two, it also, um, it also assists to make discipleship. Mm -hmm. And you know, many people are followers of Christ, but are not disciples of Christ. I see. So the, the purpose of Adventist education, it is to make people disciple or to mm -hmm. disciple people. Mm -hmm. So that not only that they follow the teaching of Jesus Christ, but they follow him. They follow him. They follow him. Yes. And if you remove that aspect, everybody says the Lord, Jesus is the Lord, but really they don't do his will. Mm. Okay? So then what do we need to do on that? We need to like to, we would like to pray like him. We like to listen like him. Yes. We like to, you know, to read the scripture the way he read. Yes. Because he spent his time to read the scripture True. and meditate it and memorize it. And when the time came when mm. the enemy came to tempt him, he referred the enemy to the scripture. Yes. It is written. And the other aspect of discipleship, it is basically the process of becoming like Jesus Christ. Mm. And even when the, where the name was coined, Christians, because the people said they talk like him, mm -hmm. they eat like him, yes. they behave like him. So these people are Christians. And you can now see the aspect of discipling, mm. how it plays a key role. Okay, because the disciples spend time with Jesus okay. Christ. So that is basically how people view them. You know, these are the disciples of mm. Christ. They are Christian because they talk like him. And the other aspect is uh, why the role of spiritual nature and training is important is because uh, it is there to serve, to teach people to serve, mm. to teach his disciples to serve his followers to serve like him. The question is, how did he serve? Mm. Jesus lived to serve. Jesus lived to bless others. Yes. And how can we also do it? We can only do it by the grace of God. Mm. Yes, and lastly on that aspect, um, this also plays a key role to foster spiritual growth through self-discipline. What do we mean by self-discipline? Because we need to be self-disciplined Christians. Look at our devotional life. We read the time we spent in our devotion. If we can spend an hour each day just to think and meditate what Jesus Christ is all about mm -hmm. and just to think of his sacrifice, mm -hmm. just to think of how he gave his life for us. That is sufficient to, to take our mind from these earthly things to heaven. Mm -hmm. So it is key in our, in our, in our Christian growth. And, and, and the same aspect also, it gives us an opportunity to commune with God. Mm -hmm. Commune with, just with God alone. Yes. That you get out of the busy schedules of the world, the busy schedules 
of the home environment mm -hmm. and work environment and just to be with God alone because Jesus did it. Night after night, he woke up early. He sang and he spent time with the Father mm -hmm. and to listen to the Father. And how did he listen to the Father? And he prayed. So prayer, we talk to God and God talks to us mm -hmm. through his word. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why the role of spiritual nurture and training is important. That yes. is the area that I can say. Yeah. Now, how can Adventist education inculcate mm -hmm. spiritual values through nurture and training? Uh huh. Okay, this is very important. It is important in the sense that um, we need in Adventist institution to create a conducive environment. Mm -hmm. When people come to our institution, they need to find a conducive environment. And Jesus says a word in the book of John 13 and verses 35. And he says, by this all will know that you are my disciples. Yes. If you love for one another. So the conducive environment, it is an environment where there's love where the administrators show love mm. to the students mm. and where the professors show love to the students mm. where the administrators and the and um, and the, and the faculty and and the staff uh, show love and respect for each other yes. and this is the environment i'm talking about a conducive environment so and and and, and one of the quotations that I just like to read is from Patriot and Prophets, Patriot and Prophets, and uh, page 319, mm. which says, His timidity was lost in his deep interest and love for those for whom he had. Mm. In the hand of God, in the hand of God, been the means of doing so much. His interest in Israel sprang from no selfish motive. The prosperity of God's chosen people was dearer to him than personal honor, dearer than the privilege of becoming the father of the mighty nation. So Jesus Christ, this is a kind of environment that he had wished prevails in Adventist institution. Mm -hmm. And when this is done, and God's name shall be honored. And this is what we are basically talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Now, how does spiritual nurture and training contribute to the mission of the World Church? Mm -hmm. um, in Adventist University of Africa, what we can do, what we have been doing, and what we are doing, and what we are intending to do, mm -hmm. it is by having a fellowship, a fellowship whereby both individuals and the church is strengthened. And through fellowship, mm. the spiritual gifts are um, put in proper use. And when these are put in proper use, the spiritual needs and encouragement that comes as an experience, mm -hmm. then we can identify how this can help other people to be strengthened spiritually mm -hmm. and how this can give hope to people mm -hmm. who may be going through challenges. And this can inspire people to continue putting their trust in God. And in that process, when we see people giving their lives to God, and the mission of God is brought to the fulfillment. Now, looking at it again through fellowship, other needs will come up. Look, for instance, when we fellowship together, we can now re remember we have our sisters in the hospital. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? We have our brothers in prison. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? I see. Yeah. Dr. Mbuchi, is there any relationship between spirit, between um, nature and training? Yes. 
um, it complements each other. Mm. As we are looking at nurture, as we mm. have defined, and in the training aspect, then we can basically realize that it complements each other. Mm. Take, for instance, maybe when you talk about training aspect, which I haven't talked too much. Um, um, when a minister, take, for instance, Adventist University of Africa, where we have ministers who are coming to continue with the education. Mm. And each one of them received a call. So yes. they, said, they received a call mm. and they came to AUA. Mm. Now, looking at the biblical time, when God called Moses, he spent time, 40 years of training, yes. prepared for the ministry for 40 years. Mm. And when we see Paul, when mm. God called Paul, so it was not Paul who came himself. Yes, God called him. God called him. Mm. Now, what was the role of Paul? Paul responded to the call. Yes. So the call belongs to God. And our role is to respond to God's call. Mm -hmm. And when we respond to God's call, God will take time to see how he can prepare us yes. for the work that is here to come. Mm. So that aspect of training comes training. in. Yes. Comes in. And that's mm. why you see nature, what it does, and now the training aspect, what it does. So they complement each other. Yes. It equips this person for the ministry that is before him. Hmm. Yep. Now, how can we be consistent with spiritual nurture and training during this COVID-19 times? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a good question. Now, COVID-19 has posed a challenge globally. Hmm. And we are either infected or we are affected. Yes, true. So, if we have not been infected, we are still affected because the global community, um, the world is a global community. Mm. We are all together. We are all God's family. True. When one is crying, we all cry. Mm. When one is in pain, we are all in pain. Yes. When one is grieving, we are all grieving. Mm. When one is crying, we are all crying. Mm. So one's cry will not be, we, just, we don't just watch to see the, the rest of the people being destroyed. We just want to stand with them and say, we are crying with you at this Together. time. Yes. Now, COVID-19 and, and the spiritual nature. Mm -hmm. This is a time that we need to develop a, you know, a, and put in perspective a ministry that will meet the needs of these people. Because this is a moment of isolation. People yes. are locked down. Yes. And that's what we develop in Adventist University of Africa. We develop worship online mm -hmm. yes. so that we can see and encourage people and give people hope. Mm. And so apart from worship online, also midweek prayer online that we can encourage people and pray together with people. We can also do visitations online that you can encourage people and those who are troubled and give them hope that there's hope after COVID. And then, and then since we cannot move freely as we used to do before, yes. then we still need to look beyond and see how we can help these people. Mm. So nurture and training plays a key role in an institution, making sure that people are not left alone because some may not be able to handle it alone. Yes. That's why you need to be your brother's keeper yes. and, and your sister's keeper. Yes. Yep. So how can spiritual nurture and training impact spiritual growth in Adventist education and COVID-19? Mm -hmm. Yes. The impact we're talking about here is um, the moment we pray together, this will create an impact. Mm. The moment we continue to encourage each other and even maybe one-to-one -one conversation on the phone. Mm. This will encourage each other, will inspire each other. Mm. So what we have done um, in Adventist University of Africa, which we encourage people um, in Adventist institution, mm. is um, we, we, we do devotion every day mm. and we send it online. Okay. And this, when they read it, they're comforted because we can't meet with them. We can't reach them, but we can reach them. Mm. Uh, and then also, 
apart from the devotions that we do, we also uh, send um, messages um, every, every week once mm -hmm. that these messages can basically assist them. And the other one is we bring people online and we just listen together and talk and see. And this in the process will help some people uh, and basically not, not to feel mm -hmm. abandoned yes. and not to be swallowed by this COVID. Yes. They can see, rise up and say, even if I'm locked, even when I'm at, at the moment, I'm just locked down, I can still basically do something else. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How can Adventist beliefs um, be blended with Adventist education and training? Yeah. Um, take, for instance, um, when we teach uh, um, courses like uh, maybe chemistry or biology. Yeah. We blend it, we blend it. And how do we blend it? We basically need to, as we teach these courses, which people perceive to be secular, we want to bring aspect of God yes. in it. Mm. That when you see the nature, for instance, there must be a designer. Mm -hmm. And this designer must be intelligent. Yes. And this, this designer is God. Yes. So when we try to blend it, so we can now begin to bring this aspect where people can begin to understand what this is all about. So we, and also when you bring in the issues of other teachings, mm -hmm. we can we can still um, bring it, uh, bring this kind of teachings um, in our devotions. Yes. Okay. In um, our fellowship, and and also in class. It can also help by us referring to each one of them in each topic that we, we do carry out yes. and, and see what we can basically do it. I see. Yeah. So, yeah. Dr. Mbuchi, how can a spiritual nurture and training in Adventist education be distinct from that of the world, from that of the education of the world? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I still remember when I was doing my primary, I didn't do it in an Adventist environment. Okay. Same to my high school. Mm -hmm. And in, in these secular schools, the, the, the teacher comes and does what is mandated to do mm. and it goes away. Yes. Now, in Adventist institution, we first begin, we begin any lesson with a prayer. And that means we are inviting God into the classroom. Yes. And if there is um, a devotion that we have to do, because we do devotion also, mm. very short one before we begin. So we bring the aspect of God's presence mm. into the classroom. Yes. And by doing that, mm. and God is present in that environment, our minds begin to take a new dimension, sensing the presence of Almighty God amidst of us. And comparing to the other aspect, you may not see it mm. happening. True. Yes. And also the second one, in our own aspect, in our own Christian life that we live, we have to lead a life that presents God. Amen. Yep. How, how can a spiritual nurture and training impact our family altars? Okay. Mm. When we go back to the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 6, when you begin from verses 5, verses 6, and, um, and uh, it is very interesting. When we begin from verse 6, of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Mm -hmm. The Bible basically says, when Moses was giving these words, the Lord, the Lord God is one. That is the center stage. That God is one. Mm. Amidst of many other gods, God is one. Mm. And then we begin now to train our children. Before they sleep, we train them. Mm. When they wake up, we pray with them. Yes. When we are walking, we still continue sharing the word of God with them. Mm. So it's a continuous experience. So when they are growing up, that's what the Bible says, train up a child when he's still young. When this child grows older, will not forget these words. True. Because it's a moment where the mind can grasp mm. all the things that we taught them when they were young. Yes. So it plays a key role. Then now, so in, in our homes, if our altars are not there, yes. 
we have to build them. Yes. We have to build them. Example in Israel, mm. the northern kingdom had strayed and imported other gods and people began to worship those gods. Mm -hmm. And God raised Elijah the Tishbite. Mm -hmm. And when Elijah the Tishbite came and he said there will be no rain in Israel, and for sure for three and a half years there was no rain. So then what happened? So to bring revival and reformation in the whole nation, they have to demolish the Baal altars yes. and build and rebuild and build the altars for God. Mm. And so that when that was done, then the rain came. So what are we talking about here? For us to experience the outpouring of the latter rain, we have to build our altars and, and begin to worship God and let the mind of our children, let our minds as parents turn to God. Yes. Because God is a source of blessings. Mm. God is a source of power. Mm. So for us to be reconnected with God, the altar that we build in our homes plays a key role. Yes, yes, I see. Yeah. Now, uh, to wrap us up, how um, does spiritual nurture and training impact on the relationships in the Adventist world? Mm -hmm. Now, nurture and training impacts the, our relationship. For instance, as we said, the world is a, is a global village. Yes. And the ministry as well is a global village. Mm -hmm. How we relate in the ministry plays a key role. Mm -hmm. How we relate in institution plays a key role. Mm -hmm. What is happening in Loma Linda, for instance, mm -hmm. and what is happening in Andrews, and what is happening in UAB, and what's happening in the Adventist University of Africa or IAS. Yes. We are connected. Yes. Connected because of how we relate with each other. It's a family. Yes. So we need basically to foster our relationship. Mm -hmm. So within ourselves, with the leadership and with the other institutions by, by many ways that this is what is happening here. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Yeah, Mbuchi, for it. having given us an in-depth look in uh, spiritual nature and training yeah. in Adventist schools and also for having graced our show today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I really appreciate for inviting me to be here and, uh, and to share a few thoughts that will help us as we begin to look into aspect of nurture and training uh, in Adventist institutions. Thank you. Thank you.